<laughs> hey everyone, Vancouver Radio, episode number 239, uh, and today's show is going to be very classy, because I have a very classy lady on the show that I've known for a while, we met uh, around Body Power 2013, I think, she's now far cooler than me on Instagram, we were chatting about Instagram beforehand, I need to up my Instagram game, I'm not cool enough. It's pro- I'll probably need a few transplants, maybe a few changes, and I need to become more humorous. I probably think I'm funnier than I actually am. Anyway, this lady that has blown up on Instagram and as a blogger and is in lots of magazines, and you might have seen her floating around the social media space, is Zanna Van Dyke. Zanna, hello. Hello. That was a great intro. I like being called classy. <laughs> and I can- <laughs> It's because I'm not classy. I'm very uncouth. I often drop an F-bomb. I'm very direct. I'm far from classy, if I'm honest. We should mention that when we first met, I did fangirl all over you. You did? All all 18 foot of you? Yeah, I literally... uh, You were very overwhelmed. Yeah, (laughs) I could tell. (laughs) Yeah, like usually people walk up to you and like, I can handle this. She's only five foot four. She's really cool. And then you're like... Whoa, she's like a foot taller than me, probably stronger than me. Shit, watch myself. (laughs) I love it. I literally love it. Um, So, (laughs) Zanna, let me uh, give you an opportunity to tell people on the show what you do, uh, who is Zanna, and what is her mission in the fitness industry? That is a big question. Okay, so I'm Zanna, Zanna Van Dyke. I'm 24. I'm a personal trainer and fitness blogger. I'm also the co-founder of the Girl Gains Movement, which is a community which brings together women from all over the world and like educates them about fitness, sustainable fitness. My goal really in the world of fitness is to educate women about the benefits of becoming stronger both mentally and physically. So I do advocate lifting weights, but I also advocate any other form of training which you enjoy. And I just want to make sure that people do do fitness, do fitness, if that's a way of saying a verb, um, in a safe and effective way. And ultimately, that's why you got to do it. You got to you got to find some fun in fitness, right? You got to find something enjoyable. Like if someone doesn't go or enjoy going into the gym, really, they shouldn't really be in the gym, should they? They should find something that they can yeah. embrace. Oh, definitely. It's all about enjoyment because enjoyment leads to sustainability. So. Let's talk to me about this Girl Gains movement, which is obviously something that is gaining quite a lot of steam. There is a huge amount of fitness-related information on Instagram. I would say it's probably the gateway or gateway for millennials currently to access fitness information, hopefully in a positive way. Yeah. Talk to me how this Girl Gains movement came about, because it's not just you, it's two other people. Who are the other two people in it? Like, what made, what inspired you to actually go on this mission? Because I know each one of you have got quite different backgrounds and that's probably what's fed in to you promoting this movement. Definitely. So Girl Games actually came about through me and my two best friends, Tally and Vicky. We met through Instagram, through that fitness platform. Um, so we met through Instagram and we were brought together at Body Power that year that I actually met you. Um, and we realised that... We had found other women with the same interests as, as us. And in our own lives, we couldn't find many of the people who, who got it, so to speak, who actually got the fitness thing. We were all on our own journeys of educating ourselves and actually transitioning into the fitness industry together. Um, and we went on that journey together. And in that summer, we decided we want to allow other women to meet like-minded girls and to learn about fitness in a, in a well, well uh, a more professional way established research-based way rather than just through Instagram so we thought we want to do events with this and get experts in and really educate women about fitness and so we created a hashtag called girl games and off the back of that we got about 50,000 hashtags on it in the first few months we were like right we should probably do something with this we made the Instagram account we did our first ever event and since then the events have just got bigger and bigger and bigger and now we're at the point where we actually have ambassadors in Australia as well as in other countries, also across the UK, in Ireland, and they all do events in their countries, which are just free events for girls, bringing them together and allowing them to meet like-minded people, but also getting experts in to educate them about fitness and nutrition. Wow, that's awesome. So what what would happen in one of these meetups if you got together with a load of girls in London 
Are you yeah. are you just having coffee or is there a seminar? Like, what's the crack? So our goal for 2017 is to mix it up because all of our events this year have been like really educational and quite like lots of talks in them. We think next year we want to do like half and half. So half of them are just bringing people together like coffee or dinner or a social event. Um, and then half of them are more educational with workouts and seminars and talks and workshops and things like that. So every other month will be a different type of event. Okay. Uh, yeah, to mix up a bit. Okay. So... The, the reason why I see there's such a benefit in like what you're doing, and what you're doing is incredible, like more people in person sharing stories, getting inspiration and kind of finding some form of empowerment. What I think is brilliant about that is I'm hoping very honest conversations are happening in this oh. environment. Um, and what I kind of want to suppose, one key thing I want to get from you today is to almost give an insight into what is going on in a young female's brain, both from the perspective that can we help other young females kind of rationalise some of their thoughts and can we help us males kind of understand a bit of that because the reality is some of the things that can go through people's minds can be a bit dark, will hold people back, can self-sabotage, can cause destructive habits. So Talk to me about some of the things that maybe you went through and some of the things that you had to overcome and what you're seeing talking to so many people and kind of what we can learn from that. Well, the thing that I think is great about Girl Games is that there's three of us. So we have three different stories and three different experiences which we can tell people about and relate to people and they're all very different. So, for example, Tally has come from a place of obsessive, like tracking macros and thinking that that's how you had to get where you want to be and then cutting off her social life and eventually finding balance. We have Vicky who went through um, an eating disorder, anorexia, and then came back and got stronger than ever and then did bikini competitions and then thought that wasn't right for her either and now it's just finding her own balance. Mm. There's a common theme of balance here. Mm. And then there's me who was just a skinny, fat student who didn't know anything about fitness, tried to educate herself using shoddy resources, ended up buying into bad diets, like literally the worst fad diet you'd ever think of. I tried them like years and years ago, thinking that's what you had to do and went through a slow process of education to get where I am now, where I actually feel like I kind of know my shit, but obviously not all the shit, but much of it. And I'm at a very, very balanced place where I know how to look after my body and I want to encourage other women to do that too. So yeah, three different journeys. Okay, so with, with people, so talk to me about like, You've got an Instagram account, you've got a lot of traffic, you've got a lot of people that are paying attention to what you're doing. Talk to me through some of the problems that you see happening and maybe can we give some advice as to how to solve some of these kind of problems or at least circumnavigate how kind of common this is because I can imagine you're getting Instagram messages where like, hey Zanna, love what you do, like I'm in a bit of a troublesome spot at the moment, like I keep binge eating or I keep doing this, like what do you see as coming up time and time again with people that they're struggling with and can we offer advice on that today and give some empowerment to the people listening? There's so many things which I see coming up over and over. There's more serious things like binge eating and eating disorders and disordered relationships with foods and healthy relationships with food. People feeling like they can't go out and eat socially. People feeling like they can't, like it's going as far as their parents can't cook their food because they have to cook everything that goes into their mouth. Like a sort of bordering on orthorexia. Um, so I get a lot of that. And I also get a lot of girls comparing themselves to people they follow on social media and saying, even comparing themselves to me, like, Zana, I see you do this, should I be doing that? And I'm constantly telling people, no, like, you need to do it your way. But there's a lot of comparison across social media. So I'd say that that's probably the main things. And then we got on to slightly less serious things. So a lot of things that girls ask me about is how to actually get into fitness, how to get the confidence to go into the gym, how to get the confidence to start changing their lifestyle, especially if they're a complete beginner. I think there's a lot of intimidation especially with the Instagram community, it can kind of feel like everybody's already there and it's just such a, it's a, such a far away goal. How do I actually get there? How do I actually achieve this? And I think there's a lot of intimidation as well. That is a fascinating point. And I suppose sometimes I, I wonder the same question and how I answer that. So if someone came up to me 
on the street and was like, you know, Ben, where do I start? What's the first thing I read? Is there the, is there a blog I should read first, a book I should read first? And sometimes it's a hard question to answer because you don't actually know where someone is at in their life, what they believe in, their environment. So when someone says to you, look, Zana, where do I start? Like, what's the first thing I can do, I should do? Where do you usually point people? Is there like a book that you tell them to go to, a certain video that you've got? Where does that journey start for the girls that you're kind of helping? For me, it's more about a direct discussion because I don't even think that I can direct them to a book or to a blog until I know more about them. So I think it's a case of finding out about their life and the changes that they want to make and where they're at right now, especially in terms of activity level. And something that I think is really important with girls and something I always try and investigate is their relationship with food. Are they somebody who's really relaxed around food or are they thinking, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to burn off what I just ate? Do you know what I mean? So for me, it's more about investigation of where they're at before I can recommend they do anything. And, okay, that's awesome, but surely there's an inflection point of like, like I can't do that with everyone because I get a lot, I get a lot of people message me. There's a lot oh, of things yeah. going on, so to have a personal conversation is amazing. But let's yeah. say you've got a thousand girls that message you, and you need to say, look, start here. What would be your approach then? Because there's got to be some generalized recommendations for kind of mass population. I think so, but do you want to know my honest answer to that? If somebody comes to me and really wants my help, I just refer them on. I refer them on to somebody who has the time and who they can, who they can get expert advice from, so onto a nutritionist or another personal trainer who actually has the time for them. Because otherwise, I don't feel like I can just say, here's, here's an article, here's what, here's what you should be doing. I want to say to them, go to somebody else who you can pay for their time and you can actually get expert advice and guidance. Sure. I do that a lot, on my referral. Okay, so thinking about where you're going, what your kind of career and message is trying to do, with you having just written the book, are you maybe trying to answer and solve that kind of problem so that people and girls can, or anyone can pick up that book and go, actually, this is, is this maybe my gateway now? Can someone pick up your book and go, this is my introduction to fitness? My, I'd say definitely my dad my dad read my book um, like cover to cover the day that I gave him it and he was just like if somebody's new to fitness this would just blow their mind because it literally covers everything like right from getting into the gym or like working out at home what, what weights to use like where to actually start through to developing a full on workout program so it literally goes from the bare bones right through to all the details that you could ever pretty much want and the nutrition section I just feel like I had a dietitian check it over, but um, it's it's nice and it, it covers everything which needs to be covered, but it's very accessible. So it's not using any jargon, it's not using any fancy words, everything's in layman's terms. So anybody could read that and feel like, okay, I understand what a balanced lifestyle actually is. Because I feel like there's this trend at the moment of everybody talking about balance, like what is balance? You need to be balanced, I'm balanced, blah, 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 blah. But what is balance? Nobody seems to be able to define it. They just say that they are. Um, so the goal of the book is to show people like this is a balanced lifestyle, this is different ways that you can train, this is how to train, this is how to eat, here's some guidelines and do with it what you will and apply it to your life. I think that's where you and the other girl gains and me and people of our nature have to share their story and have to share like what we eat, what we do in an mm -hmm. honest way. That's oh, yeah. how we show balance because you're right. You've, we've mentioned the Instagram generation of, you know, everything is, you know, you could take many fitness models that in the morning they've posted a picture of them in front of the mirror, like looking lean today, can't wait to go to the gym, etc. And then they're talking about their first meal prepped meal. And then they're talking about their perfect workout in their perfect clothes with their perfect hair. And then they're going out for, you know, Nando's and they're only having a, an X because it fits whatever macros. And you only see that highlight. And, you know, without that lack of honesty, we don't see where balance is. Like I'll freely tell people, I drink on average three times a week. I'm not drinking a lot, but I'll have a beer or two. Why? Because I enjoy beer. I go out at Fernando's, I eat puddings, like, and I build it all into the particular picture. So you, my balance is for me, it's personal, but yeah. I need to show people that balance because then they can contextualize their want for a certain balance and the results they're gonna get for that yeah. balance. 
I also think like having that balance is much more relatable and it's much more realistic and achievable for people. If you're telling people you have to meal prep every single meal, you have to go to the gym every day and have amazing workouts, that's going to make people feel even more intimidated about the whole thing because it isn't perfect and it doesn't happen that easily. So for, I think it's a journey for everybody to show people that we all have slip-ups, we all just try our best and we all are balanced is really, really important. And I saw you on your video with Tally, you mentioned the 80-20 rule and the fact that you think that some people feel like they have to meet 80-20. But I think you're completely right in that it can be 90-10. I actually talk about the 80-20, 90-10 thing in my book quite a lot. Um, so people use that as a reference for what balance is, the 80-20 rule of 80% healthy, 20% um, more indulgent. But how people interpret that is completely different. And sometimes I'm like almost 100%. And then sometimes I'm like 60%. Mm. So, but for me, and like you picked up what I was talking about in Tally, Tally's video, and for people listening, I did a, a video with one of the other girl gains, Tally Rye, and we talked about nutrition and supplements for ages. It's on YouTube. Um, and my point was is that we've all got different lifestyles and one week you might be perfect and one week, week you might be on the road, travelling, eating snack bars, living off whey protein shakes and chew, I don't know. And yeah. that, that is okay. Mm -hmm. That is okay. And next week you can be 80-20 and then the week after you can be 90-10 and the week after 70-30. But when yeah. you look at the big picture, as long as you're approaching everything in a healthy and sustainable way and you know the reasons and can rationalise it in a healthy way, then again, that is okay. Exactly. Completely agree. So with um, the gym side of it, because I'm very interested yeah. about the gym side of it, there's going to be an awful lot of people that will be inspired from the social media movement of getting into the gym. But yeah. there's going to be a lot of gyms that don't really nourish that first newbie or that beginner's experience in the right way. Like they, they don't have a good personal trainer or they don't have a good in gym induction and they don't kind of uh, get shown the equipment properly. What advice out of interest do you kind of give people to say, well, what should I look out for when I join the gym? Like how mm -hmm. do I assess whether this journey and this gym is going to be good for me? Because I personally believe that that first week maybe a month at a new gym is gonna maybe define someone's fitness journey and how they see fitness yeah well as you said if there's no good gym induction or no good personal trainer that's an issue because i always recommend people use that gym induction or use the free personal training session that often comes with most mainstream gyms as an opportunity to get a real guide of how to go for example go into the weights room and how to use the equipment if not there is so much free information online. And I always say to people, like, go on Instagram, go on YouTube, find exercises, go on bodybuilding.com, go on all these different websites, find exercises, look at the form, write them down and go in with a plan. The worst thing is to go in and be like, I have no idea what I'm doing and then end up doing nothing at all. So make sure, even if it's just like a list of like five exercises on your phone, at least you've got something to go in with and some sort of structure to follow and then you can experiment and go from there. I think also if you take that approach, so if you're going to join a gym and you've done a bit of research, like they might have looked you up on Instagram, for example. Oh, Zana did a workout today. It was a squat to a chin up to a, a plank to a press up to a something else. You yeah. could then go into that session with the personal trainer, the reduction and go, this is actually the workout I was going to start off with. Could you show me this workout and maybe a few variations? And you've nearly got like a month's worth of training there rather than going into the gym workout and going, can you show me a workout? And the trainer having to sort of cobble together. So if you go in with a semblance of an idea of why you're going to do it, that oh, trainer yeah. could really help you. And definitely ask for like the more compound movements. I always recommend that somebody ask for guidance on things like deadlift, squats, overhead presses. I think it's really important to get your form checked on those, so don't be afraid to ask for help. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm interested to know what's in your book because you haven't sent me a copy yet, which is very rude. Um, <laughs> well, I know it's not out yet, so I'll let you off. Um, <laughs> in okay. your book, what could someone expect to find? What's in there? A lot. So... This, my friend said this to me, I don't think she meant this in an insulting way, but she's like, oh, I thought it was just going to be like a picture book. 
<laughs> no. Do you know me at all? I'm like the most nerdy person ever. <laughs> I can't just do a picture book. So I wrote the whole thing myself. When I went to one of my first meetings after I got my book deal, they said, oh, do you want, do you want a ghostwriter? I said, no, I can't think of anything worse than having somebody else write words that I'm going to put my name on. Yeah. So little did I know what I was signing up for. It almost killed me writing a book. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> That's so tough. Yeah. And, but I wrote the whole thing myself, and it's very thick. So it's literally crammed full of information you will see when I send you a copy. But um, the, the nutrition section has got nutrition guidelines, and it goes from the beginners of, like, how to actually read a nutrition label. If, if you're picking something up at prep, this is how to make a good choice. This is how to read a nutrition label. It goes from the basics like that all the way through to like portion sizes, snacking, what a calorie actually is. Do you need to track macros? This is this is all the breakdown of the different macro and micronutrients. Um, and then it has lots of recipes, all of which were made using ingredients from the local co-op. So everything's really accessible. Mm-hmm. And then the fitness section has got an introduction with like how like different ways to train. So it's a complete beginner's guide to lifting weights with loads of different workouts and then exercises for each body part and guidance on how to put exercises together, how to put routines together. And there's also cardio workouts, lifts and hit ones which people can use. And there's also a whole section on something which I think is completely neglected in fitness books, which is on recovery through stress, sleep and stretching. And then also on positive mindset, confidence, and self-love. So, and it also talks about organization because I feel like if you're not organized, you're not going to fit the gym into your life. So there's a whole section on organization as well. Mm. I like so that. It, I like that. That is good. Nice. Um, you just mentioned uh, self-love. I uh, saw a Australian bit of news. I think it's going up on my Facebook page this week. Um, uh, oh, by the way, Zana, I think this is our Christmas show. I think this goes out on the 29th of December. So it's basically the Christmas show. That's I probably should have said that at the beginning. That's the day my book comes out. Does it? The 29th of December. Shit. It's 29th of December. Go buy Zana's book. Go to Waterstones. Go to W.H. Smith. Go on Amazon. Woof, woof. I didn't know that. <laughs> That's amazing. Yay. <laughs> Um, you, yeah, I saw a bit of an Australian news and this guy had lost like 130 kilos of fat. He got up to 250 kilos and he said the thing that changed his life was self-love. That he Amazing. decided to love himself for who he was and that he should stop punishing himself with food, um, you know, yes. poor yeah. behaviours and I just thought it was amazing. I think that is so true. And I, me and me and Girl Games, we did a talk um, at Intel the other day, and we spoke about self love, and we linked it into literally everything because when you achieve self love, you want to look after your body, and then you're gonna have more motivation than ever to train well and eat hard, eat eat hard, eat hard, <laughs> train hard and eat well because you want to look after yourself. You're not doing it from a place of self hate. You're doing it because you want your body to feel good and you want your mind to perform well. So I think when you when you set goals based on self-love, they're going to last longer than any aesthetic short-term goal. So if you had someone that contacted you and said, look, blah, 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 and you said, look, do you know what? I think you're not in a place where you love yourself. I genuinely think you need to get to that place. And for a lot of people, that seems very hard. Like, well, how do you just love yourself? Like, and, and it almost seemed, like, I think almost... It's, it's just not cool. It's almost not cool to say that you love yourself. Like, what advice exactly. do you then give someone to say, well, this is how you might go on a journey to self-love? I think the first thing I'd tell them is the value of self-love and the fact that it is okay to love yourself. Because I think we live in a very self-deprecating British society where you want to put yourself down. And if somebody compliments you, you're like, no, 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 like I don't, I don't look good, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's people just never accept compliments and it's it's cool to to be self-deprecating and um, so the first thing i do is tell them that it's not cool and it's actually really cool to love yourself and it's not arrogant at all and then i tell them to look beyond appearances because i think that one of the reasons why people struggle with self-love is because they base their own value on how they look and in reality that's not where your value is so my example which i always use when i'm talking at events is look at your best friend so if I talk about Tally, 
and somebody says to me, why do you love Tally? I'd never say because Tally's got a flat stomach and a thigh gap. That's not why I'd say that I love Tally. I'd say I love Tally because she's really intelligent and she's really witty and she makes me laugh and she's really caring and she always picks up the phone when I'm stressed. That's why I'd say I love Tally. It's not because of the way she looks. And then that's why people say they love you. So you've got to think about yourself. That's why people love you, because of who you are, not because of how you look. And that's why you should love yourself. Do you know what? That's really cool. Um, and I, I've i kind of spoken about that in indirect ways, but I've never, I suppose, almost looked at it from that angle that, yeah, if you were to ask someone, tell me why you love that person, you wouldn't go, I really like Ben because of his shoulders. Like, yeah. You just wouldn't say that. You're like, oh, I like Ben because he's honest, he's knowledgeable, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and when you put it into external perspective like that, like, wow. And I suppose that's where we have to talk about environment. Like, if your friends can't say nice things like that about you, do yeah. you need to change environment? Because people might feel bad about changing because their friends are not going to accept that journey you're going to go on. I think environment is so important. And I always encourage people to surround themselves with positive people and empowering people. And even if you can't find them in person, find them online. That's how I met Tally and Vicky. And that's how I've met some of my best friends. And I know something that I, I've said this to people before, like you can change your environment, but sometimes you can't. Because if it's a family member or somebody who's really close to you and unavoidable, an employee, a, a colleague, sometimes you can't escape them. So it's often a process of just realizing that it says much more about them than it says about you. If they're trying to put you down, they're not supporting you, that's a reflection on their own insecurity or their own issues, and it's nothing to do with you. Um, but if you can, surround yourself with positive people. And this is probably where Instagram and kind of communities that have developed, this is why they have developed, because people have almost had to stand back from their environment that they would usually be associated with. So let's say they had 10 school friends and actually nine of them were quite negative or didn't really understand where they're going. They have to find this new like-minded community and that's where people have become probably more introverted and focused on social media because that's almost where their friends are now before yeah. they meet these people, let's say in real life or meet similar like-minded people down the gym. So kind of social media has helped people get support for the mindset that they need to have. And this is exactly what Girl Gains is. It's exactly why we try and bring women together. And we actually have girls who've come to our events and now have their own little friendship groups and WhatsApp groups and they all hang out together and they have that bond because they've met like-minded people. Mm. They're all positive. We have this thing in Girl Gains where we try and encourage everybody at the end of every day to say three positive things, whether it's to their partner or to their best friends and say three positive things from their day. And we encourage all our girls at our events to make friends with each other and to make that promise with each other that every night they're going to share three positive things with each other so that then they've been a positive influence on like together. Mm. That's awesome. awesome. I love that. It's kind of like I talk about the gratitude log and you're, yeah. you're meant to write down three to five things that have been positive in your day. Um, yeah. And I'm actually trying to, I don't know if you've ever done any journaling or um, yeah. Yeah, written a gratitude log long term. There's some of these books that have been created with all of this stuff written in them. And I find it weird. I've got two at the moment. One of them's called, um, what's it called? A help journal or something. Um, yeah. And I can't remember the other one. But anyway, they're, they're laid out in a way that you write in a pattern at night. And both of these books go through the positives, but then talk about what could be changed. Yes, we what th- improvement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and I don't like that. No? I don't like that Why? because I think if you go through three positives in your day and you then talk about what could be improved, your okay. mind then focuses on what can be improved, whereas the energy and the mindset should be, this is how good my day has been. I'm now going to rest for sleep and I'm going to have restful sleep. If someone okay. said to me before I went to bed, Ben, tell me what could be better about your day. I'm not going to feel relaxed. I'm going to think, fuck, this is what I'm going to do tomorrow to change that. So for me, I think you should wake up the next day and reflect on tomorrow and what could have been better and make that fix that day when you are empowered and have the time to fix that. I quite like that. See, what, what we say is do one improvement and then do the three positives. Because then you still finish on a positive. But I like the idea of doing it the next day. Yeah, I just, 
I pers I know how my mind works. If I can make something yeah. better, I will sit and think about how I can improve that. So I yeah, have yeah. to shield my mindset to say, well, the only thing I want at night is positivity. Mm -hmm. And like, I've even talked to my girlfriend to say, look, we don't ever talk about negative things before bed. Like, let's not talk about what yeah, might have yeah. happened negative with you at work or anything like that. It's all positive because I, I know it, help, it would help her as well, but it definitely helps me. Oh, yeah, definitely. But I think the, the negative should, even if it's the next morning, it should never be neglected because I think oh, it's, it's so important to focus on self-awareness and self-development. Otherwise, you're never going to develop as a human being. Mm. If for me, it's just knowing how the human mind works. It's a security me mechanism. If there's a, an ounce of negativity, you want to mm. deal with that. You focus on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. No, that's a really good point. So... Uh, we will wrap up the show on that bombshell for people. Um, your book, uh, we've discussed, is out today. This is going live on the 29th of December. I suppose you should tell people what it's called. It's strong. It's called Strong. That's it. Is that because you're strong? It's about, basically, I want people to finish the book and feel mentally and physically stronger. Nice. That's why. I like that. I love that. Um, where can they buy it? They can buy it on Amazon. And then it's also going to be in Waterstairs and WH Smith. So nice. check it out. Well, congratulations. I hope it all goes really well. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, you are welcome. Uh, for anyone that wants to follow you on any of the social spaces after today, where yes. do they find you? What are you on the different social platforms to be found? I am Zana Van Dyke across all social platforms. And it's Z-A-N-N-A-V-A-N-D-I-J-K. <laughs> My D-I-J-K. Nobody ever spells Dyke right. But yeah, it's a no. Dutch name. Yeah, well, you you need to get that across. <laughs> I even spell out Coomba for people because people always yeah. miss out the B. <gasps> oh yeah, I bet like, they do. Fuck you, put that B in. C O O M B E R. <laughs> no one ever gets my name right, like ever. So I'm just it's automatic response to spell it out. <laughs> yeah, and what are the girl gains social tags? It's at the girl gains across all social media, and then if you just use the hashtag girl gains, there's about for almost 500,000 posts on there now, so you can find loads of girls who are doing the same thing as you and are into fitness. Using wow, that. that's a lot of tags. If yeah, I if I tagged Ben Coomba, there'd probably be about three. <laughs> I'm sure there's lots, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it Girl Games with an S or a Z? S. Okay. We're not that badass. Yeah, but some people do it with a Z, don't they? I know they do, and I'm like, nah. -uh. They're the uncool people, are they? Yeah, the cool people are ones with the S, guys. The people what? that have did English at school. Yes, those ones. That's us. <laughs> <laughs> right, Zana, uh, thank you very much for being on the show. Uh, all the best with your book. If you've resonated with some of the things that Zana has said today, you like the sound of the book, what the book is trying to translate, if you think it can resonate with you, then go and grab a copy. It's out now. It's called Strong. It's on Amazon. It's in the bookshop. Have a flick. If you're not sure, nip into Waterstones, flick through the pages. I'm sure there'll be some pretty pictures as well as some clever words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. But Zana, all the best with it. For everyone listening on the podcast, at the time of recording this, I have no idea who's up next on the show. It should really be me and Rachel starting the new year in style with a few kidney punches and a few uh, knowledge nuggets. But who knows? Until next week, have an amazing Christmas, amazing new year, all that stuff. Let's kick ass in 2017. I'm going to kick ass in 2017. I don't know about you. Either way, be awesome. And I will speak to you next week. Goodbye. Hey everyone, Vancouver Radio, episode number 238, and today is going to be very nutritional.